It's now been six months since Claudia disappeared. We believe that she didn't go willingly and was taken by someone that she had no reason to go. I'm still people convinced that people close to uh, Claudia have told us lies. Helped to end the family's nightmare. So she hasn't and just gone somewhere like some people have thought. If I can clear this up, next few hours, I think we keep up hope because a body hasn't been found. And if a body hasn't been found, then there's a hope that she's still alive and still out there somewhere. Hey you and welcome. My name is Mike and in this old video, we're looking at the case of a woman who has been missing for over 10 years now. Her name is Claudia Lawrence and she vanished near her home in York, England in 2009. There was a major investigation. There were arrests, but nothing ever really came of well, anything. One thing we're going to look at in this case is that there is some very curious surveillance footage of a person of interest walking around her house shortly after she disappeared. Rubbernecking? I don't think so. This remains a major unsolved case. There has never really been anything leading to anything. So let's take a look at the unsolved disappearance of Claudia Lawrence. Claudia was born in 1974, brought up in Malton, a North Yorkshire market town 16 miles from York. She had a pretty good upbringing, Claudia played the flute, went on riding lessons and had ponies, no less. After finishing private school, she went on to study catering, and by the time she was in her early 20s, she had worked in various kitchens before joining the University of York as a chef. She was a well-liked employee, she loved the job, she was the type who would volunteer for shifts at Christmas so others could spend it with their children. She bought a terraced house on the outskirts of the city centre, on Heworth Road. It wasn't far from the university she worked at, so she would walk as her car was in the garage getting tuned up. 35-year-old Claudia Lawrence was last seen walking home from work on the 18th of March 2009, at half two. Later that day, she spoke to her parents, separately, on the phone to make plans to meet up soon. They said that after talking to her on the phone, she seemed grand, not a bother on her. It would be 24 hours later that the alarm would be raised, that she was gone. The next day, that evening, Claudia had arranged to meet up with a friend for a drink in the local pub. And she never showed. Claudia's friend began to ring uh, Claudia's phone but went straight to voicemail. And she began to worry as Claudia was known to be, you know, the reliable type. She would show up, but if she didn't, she would let you know she wasn't going to show up. So the next day, the 20th, when Claudia's friend still couldn't get through to her, she rang Claudia's dad, Peter. Peter rang Claudia's work to see if she'd shown up there, but no sign of her. So two days after Claudia was last heard from, Peter and Claudia's friend entered Claudia's home. They thought she might have fallen down the stairs or had some kind of an accident, so they were kind of expecting the worst. And this is what they found. Absolutely nothing. Her slippers were neatly by the door, dishes stacked in the sink. The jewellery she typically took off for work and left at home was on the chest of drawers. In the kitchen next to the bathroom, her toothbrush had been left on the draining board. Her phone and rucksack containing her chef's whites were missing. Generally that whole door would contain a chef whites. It would generally also contain a Samsung mobile phone. It was a, a silver or a gunmetal grey T900 Samsung. This is not in her home address and you would normally expect it to be uh, if she'd come home from work as she had done. She would normally carry a chef whites, uh, it's not there. So we're looking for this item or identical to this item. We're looking for a Chef White and we're looking for a Samsung T900. Everything suggested she had planned and left for work. The police were then called and an intense search began. They scoured the house and the 45 minute route she walked to work and they found nothing. She had just vanished. It seems that on the morning of the 19th, the day after she was last heard from, she got up that morning, got ready for work, left, 
And that's it. There's been no contact since Wednesday evening. Phone is not contactable. Claudia is 35 years old. She's a very happy, sociable person. There's nothing at all to suggest that she had ends or worries that would make her want to leave. This disappearance is completely and utterly out of character. I just feel that someone has taken her. That's all. I, that's the only thing that is really sort of in my mind, is that someone's taken her. What's happened after that, I obviously don't really want to think about. She's talked about maybe, you know, if she ever decided to move on, she couldn't do it because she loved her friends so much and she loved her life here. So she hasn't just gone somewhere like some people have thought that she has because she wouldn't. She, she would have missed us all, just as we miss her now. The intensity of the search increased as the days went by. Her face was on the front pages. And a few days later, the police told reporters they believed that uh, she had been abducted. Good morning, everybody. The vehicle you can see behind me is the latest item that we're using in terms of seeking to achieve further information and assistance from the communities within York uh, with regard to where Claudia Lawrence is at the moment. I'd like to pay tribute to the people of York and North Yorkshire and beyond in terms of the assistance that we've received for the investigation to date because it has been quite magnificent and we're overwhelmed effectively with the information that we're receiving. However, we are dealing with that information in a, in a structured and expeditious manner and we're moving forward. It's definitely taking our investigation forward. However, I must amplify the need for further assistance. We don't know what's happened to Claudia. We don't know where she is. We need information to assist us to move forward. Posters of Claudia were plastered on lampposts across the city of York, and police combed through the undergrowth, checked nearby streams, and spoke to everyone they could, her neighbors, anyone. Her house was searched again, and largely discounted as a crime scene because there were no signs of a struggle or foul play. A suggestion that Claudia had left the country to live in Cyprus, where she had holidayed numerous times and met new people, and also the last text she received was from Cypriot, but that theory that she had left was dismissed, because her bank cards and passport, they were still at home. Digitally, she left no trace. She didn't have social media, she didn't own a computer, she didn't use the internet on her phone, and her phone didn't have any kind of location tracker on it. So, there was no digital footprint. Now, she had replied to a text message at half eight on the 18th of March, but failed to respond to one received at quarter past nine. So, did something happen to her that night, or did she just choose not to respond? Now, there are signs that she got up, like, ready for work the next day, so it seems more likely she just didn't bother responding. Analysis of her phone showed it deliberately turned off at 12.10 the next day, within an eight mile radius of York. Detectives were certain Claudia had left for work on the 19th of March, and that something had happened to her between Heworth Road and Goodrick College, where she worked. A number of witnesses came forward, including a uh, cyclist, who said he saw a woman matching Claudia's description that very morning, talking to a man the police have dubbed the left-handed smoker. They were spotted near Melrose Gate Bridge at about 5.35. If she had left for work that morning as normal, that would have matched the time frame. The first sighting is on Melrose Gate Bridge at 5.35, a gentleman cycling past, and he sees a man in a black hoodie and a cigarette in his left hand. And, <clears throat> and what about the second sighting then? The second sighting, and we don't know it's the same couple. Right. And in fact, on neither occasion do we know it's Claudia, but the, the gentleman driving past and he sees a couple in an argument on University Road. We need to know who that man was. And that Six weeks after Claudia's disappearance, the investigation was reclassified as a suspected murder. Claudia's family weren't happy with the police investigation. A reward of £10,000 to anyone providing information which leads to the arrest and conviction of any person linked to the disappearance was offered. The police received over 1,200 calls offering information, but nothing. Then in May, two months after her disappearance, Police released CCTV footage of a person of interest seen near Claudia's home at 5 a.m., the morning after her disappearance. This person of interest, likely a man, was seen walking in and out of an alley in Heworth Place, behind Claudia's house, on Thursday, 19th of March 2009, the day after Claudia was last seen. 
And over the years, they released more footage. Let's see another bit. The same man was seen walking in and out of Heworth Place at 7.15 p.m. on Wednesday, 18th of March, the day Claudia was last seen. So we have this unidentified man walking around Claudia's place the evening she was last seen. And then we have footage of him walking around the same place, the alleyway behind her house, the morning. It's believed she was taken, abducted, or whatever. The police requested that this person identify themselves, but of course, never found him. By June, the detectives really started looking into Claudia's private life. And the lead detective made some, what the family thought were unhelpful statements about the kind of person she was, is. Well, it's now 11 weeks since Claudia disappeared. There's been no proof of life. I'm treating this investigation as one of suspected murder. Now, Ray, there's, there's something you want to talk about tonight that you haven't spoken about in public before. You think it could be the key, that there are areas of Claudia's life that are delicate, to say the least, and definitely complex. Tell us what it is you want to say. As the investigation has developed, it's apparent that some of Claudia's relationships had an element of complexity and mystery to them. I'm certain that some of those relationships were not known to a family or a friend. I need to know the details of those relationships. In fact, I do know details of some of them. And I would urge anybody that was involved in a relationship with Claudia or knew of one that a friend, a colleague, a neighbour was involved in, please, if they're going to be discreet and if they want to actually enable us to deal with it in a controlled way, in a confidential way, they need to pick up that phone and give the call tonight. You see, some people might think they're protecting Claudia and they're protecting Claudia's reputation, but it's far, far more important than that if indeed we are talking here about murder. I mean, you, you do want to hear from people who even have suspicions about other people. That would be useful to you at this stage. Absolutely. The rumour mill was that she had secret relationships, that she was a homewrecker, the other woman, and this led to a certain amount of victim blaming. Police had started to consider jealousy and revenge as motives, and that there may have been multiple people close to Claudia who were responsible for whatever happened to her. Was she having, you know, like an affair? Was she like somebody's mistress or something like that? And the other person found out, or the person she was having some seeing wanted her out of their lives. That's kind of one that's gone around again and again. Who knows how likely it is. Years later, in 2015, Claudia's house was forensically re-examined using techniques that weren't available at the time she went missing. That turned up fingerprints and DNA that led nowhere. Partial fingerprints, small bits of DNA, it's kind of useless. You can't get any identification out of that. They also searched again the alleyway behind her house where this mystery person was, but, I mean, six years later, they found jack shit. In 2014, five years after Claudia's disappearance, the first arrests were made. A house was searched and a pub had its cellar dug up. Claudia's phone had been traced to the area these places were in the weeks before she vanished. A 59-year-old man was held on suspicion of murder, and a 46-year-old man was held on suspicion of perverting the course of justice, but both were released later that year without charge. The following year, four men who were regulars in Claudia's local pub were arrested on suspicion of murder, but that ended due to lack of evidence. And one more thing, a person who has recently been linked to the Claudia Lawrence case is a convicted killer. Christopher Highwell from Swindon, a fair bit away from York, was convicted of the murder of Sean O'Callaghan and Becky Godden. And he has also been linked to a number of missing women. I'll get charged with this and I'm guilty. I'll get natural. I'll be fine now, but it's obviously five years to go, so the chances are looking good as it is. Um, if I wrap this up in the next few hours, any other charges against me will be brought. There's a bit of past, I think you probably know about various things in the past, this car, there's breakings and bits and pieces. And some more serious. Well, that will clearing this up be enough to stop everything else. I don't want to keep coming back every couple of years on a different charge all the time. 
So what I'm saying is, if I can clear this up in the next few hours, will everything else be forgotten? Sean O'Callaghan was abducted by Christopher Halliwell as she made her way home from a night out in Swindon in the early hours of March 19th, 2011. After he was arrested for killing Sean six days later, Christopher offered detectives another one and led them to where he buried the headless corpse of Becky Godden eight years earlier. She had disappeared from Swindon in 2003. Now, a witness claims to have seen Christopher talking to Claudia shortly before she disappeared. Although he lived in Swindon, more than 200 miles away from York, he had links to the area. His father lived in Huddersfield, an hour's drive from York, and the description of the infamous left-handed smoker seen talking to Claudia the morning she disappeared seems identical to Christopher, a left-handed smoker, 5 foot 9, with slightly receding hair and a skinny build. Serial killers are usually triggered by dates, said an investigator. And the day Claudia vanished was the day that Christopher Halliwell had broken up with one of his partners. But regarding the Christopher Halliwell case, nothing more regarding Claudia has really come of it. The parents of Claudia have been very critical, as they believe he may have had something to do with their daughter's disappearance. And they have spoken out against the low budget the investigators of Christopher Halliwell's case have been given. The police continue to blame lack of cooperation from witnesses in this investigation. And over 10 years later, we have nothing. It seems that Claudia got up for work one morning, got dressed, got ready, walked out, and that's it. I'm still convinced that people are lying to us. I'm still people convinced that people close to uh, Claudia have told us lies. Um, and I'm determined to, to make sure that we give them the opportunity to come forward with the right information. If they continue to lie and we prove they're lying, they'll be arrested. Someone out there does know what happened to Claudia. It's just time they said so. What it's doing to the family is dreadful. And if people have been lying to the police to save their own skin, in a case as important as this, for heaven's sake, come on, it's just not on. The family can't cope with that. Nothing was found in her house, no disturbances or anything like that. So it's, it's likely she was taken on that short walk to work. And the only lead is the extremely grainy footage of an unidentified person in and around Claudia's house during the time when she could have been stopped, attacked or taken. Much like the cases of Jennifer Kessie and Jody Husentrude, this is most likely an abduction. Somebody took her. Where they went, who knows? Much like the cases of Jennifer and Jody, so much time has passed that there's a good chance this will likely remain unsolved. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, if you'd like to see some more of my videos, please work away and subscribe if you want to see more. I will see you as always real soon in the next video. Take care of yourselves. Mike out.